Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Paul Cramey. Welcome, welcome to our session today. Um, as you can see from the agenda on the uh, on the screen, uh, today we're going to cover um, mostly talking about variations. Um, and then after we've covered that a little bit, then we'll go into the second topic, which is looking at all the different kind of combinations of how you can copy uh, either individual line items or an entire order or estimate from, from uh, a source estimate or uh, order over to another estimate or order. Then on Thursday, we're going to uh, switch gears and we'll talk about uh, uh, setting up uh, what's called a recurring order and then how you can automate uh, you know, the process of having that recurring order uh, generate a, um, an actual invoice. And then on Thursday, uh, the last topic we'll cover is going to uh, just kind of an introductory uh, discussion of uh, user-defined fields, what they are, how they are used, and then uh, how to how to uh, set them up yourself. A uh, couple of just housekeeping things to uh, point out. Uh, there's no handouts for this session today. Both of them, however, today and Thursday will be uh, recorded. Uh, I will be pausing in a, a couple of different spots today for questions. So just uh, if you got anything that comes to mind based on what we've talked about, please uh, um, uh, share your question, and we will we should have ample time to uh, you know to talk about uh, questions and answer them. And then finally, there's always available resources that are available, um, um, starting from one-on-one -on -one consulting services. Uh, and then the schedule, how to schedule those, and then on into uh, looking at the Sirius website where you can see what webinar schedules are available, when they are, looking at finding different kind of wiki articles on various topics. And then, of course, there's uh, a series of, uh, of advanced training videos that may be of interest to you. Now, I'm going to uh, change my, uh, my view here just a second. And we're actually going to go in and uh, uh, start looking at uh, at control. Uh, Linda, can you can you confirm for me that you're seeing control on your end? We we can we do see it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, first of all, just kind of some elementary things to uh, uh, in the form of questions. First is what are estimate variations? And just very simply, it's a control feature that will facilitate users being able to create uh, an estimate uh, for a customer that would have multiple uh, options, uh, you know, to present to them. And that uh, an est a variation gives a very professional look on uh, what those uh, options look like. They appear as if they're completely different estimates. But yet they're still part of the uh, of just one estimate uh, record that's in the uh, the system. Now, what's required in order to use the estimate variations? Um, anybody that can uh, log in and create an estimate or create an order uh, has the ability to uh, uh, to use the uh, uh, fee est uh, variation feature. However, it must be activated in your system. Um, before you can uh, use that particular feature. Now, I would be surprised if all of your systems don't already have it active, but uh, just in the event that it, that, uh, they, it isn't, uh, let me show you where you go to make sure that it is active. And I'm going to go up here to the top taskbar and choose startup or setup. Then I'm going to come down to system setup. Then over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to choose uh, inside this order estimates and service tickets. I'm going to come down to estimate options and select it. Now let me edit that just so you can see better. And it's the second uh, item right here. There has to be a check mark on that particular item in order for the uh, variation feature, um, you know, to be uh, to be usable. Just a quick, uh, I'd be surprised if it's not already active in your system, but it's, it's possible that it's not. 
Now, just some very, very basics. I'm going to open uh, this estimate number 548 because um, um, it's got three different variations. And if you look down at the very bottom, uh, the, this is where you see that there are variations, okay? So basically, the basic concept is that you create uh, you create uh, using the, the various products, you create uh, one or more different line items for whatever it is that you're needing to uh, provide a quote to the customer. And then you can uh, create a, a variation of that. And we'll go through, you can do that by simply cloning uh, an existing uh, variation. You can uh, change the name of a variation. You can delete a variation if you don't no longer need it. And then you can add a variation. Now the thing about an add is that you're starting that variation from scratch, okay? Deleting is pretty obvious. Renaming is doing nothing more than changing the name down here um, to, a, to a, a name that's more meaningful to you and also to the customer. And then cloning, as I said, simply takes everything from the, uh, from the active um, uh, variation and duplicates it into another one. I'm going to do that just real quick. I'm not going to save any of this. So I'm just going to clone. Whoops, I've got to get into the edit mode. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I'm just going to say clone. And then notice down here at the bottom, it says this is the, uh, it repeated the name, and then added the word clone to it. And everything is identical as far as the product line items uh, that that are here when you when you clone. And then I could, if I wanted to, I could come in, excuse me, and rename that to uh, something that's more uh, more meaningful. So with that kind of background, now let's go in and um, and create one. And I've got one that's partially started um, in the interest of time. So I'm just going to switch over to it. And here what I've done is created two line items. One is a banner and one is or, or some real estate signs. And you can see down at the bottom, I've named it option one banners and real estate signs. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, um, um, begin to add a second variation to this. I can do it, as I said, by cloning, by uh, adding. Um, so if we wanted to do another variation, and I'm just gonna start with this blank one, scratch, uh, and we'll call this uh, option two, um, just giving it a name. So now it's, it's started from scratch, okay? There aren't any line items in here. Now, what I wanna do here is point out, um, and we're not gonna save this, but point out a, a couple of things. I could come back and choose the same digital print product. And let's say we're gonna do a flat stock. We're gonna do six of them, um, 18 by 24. Uh, on corrugated plastic, um, don't have any parts populated there, so let me come down to aluminum again. Um, so there, I've added one. Now, what I really wanted to show you was that um, you can come down here and rename it. I, I'm not gonna bother to do that, but look up here at the top uh, where it says view all products. Okay, if I click that, now you're seeing all of the primary, uh, all of the standard product categories, and you could expand these and see all of the different um, products that are in the system, okay? Now, not part of this discussion right now, but we're gonna come back and spend quite a bit of time um, 
talking about the copy options, copy a, an individual line item, copy an entire uh, estimate or an entire order. So for example, if I wanted to just copy everything from this order, I would say, okay, and now it's gonna add that, and it just happened that it was one, um, you know, one line item that was all that was added, okay? So now I'm gonna save this so that we can come back and look at the, uh, um, I'm gonna save it as an estimate. Um, be helpful if I put a company in there. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got that saved. And it should be estimate number 549. So now let's look and see what that estimate looks like um, and how the customer would see it. So if we come over to the action toolbar and say a standard estimate, and then we'll just do a, a preview, okay? <clears throat> What you're gonna see is that the estimate will uh, always have the, the number associated with it, 549, so that you're gonna see that up here at the top. And then underneath it, you're gonna see if there's variations, you're gonna see the word option, and then whatever was entered as the name of that option. And if I go to the second page, all of the variations will begin on a new page. So it gives the professional look that they're uh, that they're truly um, different estimates, and they include the. Uh, um, let me scroll down so you can see. Uh, each variation includes its own um, its own um, totals information. So having said that, now I want to come back to the estimate itself because um, we need to come down to the. Um, to the items again, and we need to talk about the significance of, of these down here, of the variations and how they, the impact that they have on the, um, um, what you see in this stuff. This one that's in the left most position, so the one that reads option one, banners and real estate signs, that's referred to as the active variation. And the significance of that is if you're in Explorer and you're exploring uh, estimates, uh, the, the values associated with that active estimate or active variation, that's what you're going to see, okay? Now, if I wanted to make this a different, uh, change the priority, the, not the priority, but make them a different, um, um, make option two, the active one, I can do that in the edit mode by simply selecting it and then say set as active, okay? So if I choose set as active, now it's over in that primary position as the active, um, as the active variation, okay? Now I'm gonna save this. Um, now we want to kind of switch gears and go into the conversion process of converting that estimate to an order. So if I close this down, there's uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, so if I come back up to Explore and Exploring Orders, there's 549. Now just like whether it's a variation or just a, a plain vanilla estimate or, or an order, um, I can click on it, double click on it and open it. So if I needed to make some additional changes to it, I would simply open it, edit it, 
make my changes, and then save it. Or if I didn't have anything to change, then I could simply highlight it and do a right mouse click and say convert, okay? And that would begin the conversion process. I'm gonna open it so we can see how you can do, how you can begin the convert process with the estimate open. And I do, would do that by simply coming over to the action toolbar on the right and select convert. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'd say convert. Um, this is confirming that I want to go through the conversion process. I'm going to say yes. I don't want to lock anything and there's no reason to uh, that I would want to edit anything. So I'm not going to select either of those two. So now it's going to have me choose the variation that I want. Okay. Remember, here's the one that we changed the, it to the, be the active one. So it's first. And then this one is the one that had been the active one that I demoted to a, to a secondary um, um, variation. Now, the purpose of this is you choose then which of the, in this case, which of the two variations you want to convert. So even though we changed and had option two as the active one, let's say that the customer decided to go ahead with this first one. So I would highlight it, say, okay. That's just some flags that I've got set. And now it's going through the conversion process to convert this to uh, in order. And it's gonna complete the conversion and then it's going to um, to save it, okay? I didn't really need to do that. Okay, so now it's saved as order number 1069, okay? So two things that I wanted to show you. Number one, that it's this is what it uh, this is the option one the chunk combination that we that we chose. The uh, order came from estimate number five forty nine, which is what we created. But now I want to go back to Explorer and look at the um, uh, estimate number five forty nine, and notice that it is has been converted. OK. At this point, you can no longer make changes to that estimate. So it's it's locked. You, you don't see the edit button over here, so you cannot make any changes to that. I'm opening it because I wanted to show you. Remember, we a few minutes ago, we made option two the active one. But we converted option one to the order. Well, it makes that become the active uh, variation. So that's the one that's, that was converted. And the other one has, is still physically there, but has been demoted to a, secondary, um, to a secondary position. Now, if you want this estimate again to be usable, then your choice would be to, to clone it and save it as a, a new as as a new estimate any questions this is kind of a, a quick walk through variations it's a wonderful wonderful feature i think it uh, you can really give some professional um, uh, options to a customer and many times i've found in talking to uh, clients that i work with it gives a very professional way of uh, presenting uh, the customer with the, with the, in most cases, they, the choices that they wanted to see so that they can make a decision on which, uh, which what direction they want to go, which variation that they would want to choose. No questions, Paul. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to come back and, um, 
let's um let's clone this one and now what we're going to do is talk about uh, how you can copy um, individual line items or other to um, you know to an estimate okay so we got it open this is the one that's active now let's say that we want to copy some stuff either from um, a different very uh, um, a different estimate or from a different order and as I mentioned a few minutes ago I would come over here to the um, say view products and let's say that we wanted to copy um, a, an entire estimate or order um, to this one. So what I want to do is to find um, the the different combinations you can copy. Um, you can copy from an estimate. You can copy from an order. You can copy from an estimate variation. Um, and do that a line item at a time. Or you can say, I want to copy an entire estimate, an entire order. Um, and you can copy the, the things that you're going to copy. You can copy them to and create a brand new uh, estimate or a brand new order or a brand new variation within an estimate. Um, so you got many, many different combinations of um, of how of, of, of how to utilize the the copy features think in terms of a destination the destination is what you're copying to and the source that we'll be talking about that's where you're copying from okay so you're going to have a from document or estimate or estimates that are as orders that you're copying from and you're going to be copying them to a destination, which can be either a new order or a new estimate or an existing one. So the, the process, let's copy, um, let's start from scratch. Okay, I'm going to change my mind and start from scratch. So I'm going to do a new, let's do a new estimate. And let's do um, a line item, flat stock, do 10, um, oops, 10, um, 48 by 96, um, site times, okay? I'm just gonna save that. Now, let's go say that we want to copy from um, other sources. Um, so what we would do is you could either continue to add line items or I could come up to view all products. And if I wanted to copy an entire, uh, every, every line item from an existing, um, I can do it from an existing order. I can do it from an existing estimate. So if I want to copy from, um, uh, look at my notes here. I got one. It's uh, let's choose 548. Okay. So I want to copy every line item from estimate 548. <clears throat> So now it's going through, we had one item before. Now it's asking me which of these variations do I want to copy? So let's copy this one, okay? So because it was an estimate that had variations, now it's saying which one of those variations did I want to copy? You know, there were three of them there, it's only copying one. And notice that this one happened to have the um, uh, digital uh, digital product, but it also had lamination. So the key is that if, it, and then when you're copying uh, 
when you're copying all line items, it's going to copy all of the parent items. And if any parent had a child or if a child had a sub child, all of those are going to get copied uh, into what you're what you're doing. OK. So now we we've, we've created um, we started off with one that we built from scratch and we copied from an estimate. Um, a, a different uh, two different items. Now, let's say that we want to copy uh, individual items, individual lines. This is where it gets a little bit more, um, um, not complex, but you have to kind of visualize. First of all, you have to choose because we're viewing line item, okay? Now we have to choose, are we going to copy from an order? Are we going to copy from an estimate? Are we going to copy from a recurring order? Let's make it simple. Let's copy it from an order. Okay. So now <clears throat> it's showing me the different orders that are there. And it's showing me that within this one, I have line item one and I have line item two. If I look at 1066, I've got line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. Okay, so I have five different line items in that particular um, in that particular order. So let's pick on this one. Let's say that we want line one, and let's say that we want line three, and we want line five. Okay, I'm going to take the check mark off of that one. So for whatever the new one that we're creating, I want these three line items to be included. So I'd say okay to that. And it opens up the items. And now you can see we started off with the one that we created from scratch. Lines two and two A, we copied uh, in entirety. And then lines three, four, and five were the ones that we copied um, on a selective basis out of that order that actually had a total of five different uh, different line items. Okay. Um, and I'm just looking at my notes here just a second. Now I'm going to do, um, going to come back to um, I'm going to come back up to the copy line items and I want to go to an estimate. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now what we're seeing is this is estimate number 537 that has 1A and 1A, uh, 1A1. So let's say that we want all of these. So now we're bringing in the parent and the child. And in this case, there should be a subchild. Okay. Oh, there we go. I was beginning to think that something locked up on me. Okay, so now we we ended up at five, and now we have uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a couple of these have um, have child items. Okay, 
10 and 10a, 9 and 9a. So that you, you can really, um, obviously to use the copy feature effectively, before you really get started, you're gonna have to know what it is that you're after. You're gonna have to know where that is uh, from, from by browsing and seeing you know, what estimate or what order you want to, you need to combine. Uh, so kind of have your ducks lined up, so to speak, um, so that you can um, know where you're, where you need to go in order to find stuff. So since we're creating um, this in its, in, uh, you know, as a new estimate, let's create another variation that we'll just call option um, two. And we, can um, start up here by copying all line items. This time, let's take it from an order. No, let's take it from an estimate this time. <clears throat> um, let's come down to, I'm going to see if I can tell. This one looks pretty good size. So let's see what that one amounts to. It had variations as well. So let's pick that one. <clears throat> now we're now we're beginning to populate the second variation that we started, not by entering things from scratch, but rather by going back into uh, another estimate and bringing, um, bringing all of the line items for that one, for one variation into, um, into this new one. <clears throat> So you can see this one had a lot of stuff to it. There's um, line one, it had parent and it had child items. Uh, that one might even have, that one had a sub child item that it brought forward. Um, so we ended up with a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in, in that one. So the key is that when you're in Explore and you're and you're copying, one of the things that's important is that you should always, uh, if you're looking at orders over here, viewing line items, make sure that you're seeing the transaction number. So in the case of orders, that's the order number. In the case of estimates, that's going to be the estimate number. And if you were copying from a recurring order, then it's going to be a recurring order. Okay. The next important um, item is the item number. And the, let's come back to an order. Um, so this is representing a particular line. So that's line one, that's line two. And if you see one and then one A and one A1, that is a, that's line item one and line item 1a which is a child and then line item 1a1 which is the child of a, of a child it's a sub child okay so you really need to be able to see uh, in order to effectively use the copy process you need to be able to see the order number or the estimate number or the recurring order and you need to be able to see you know the line items so if you should happen, if your browser, um, not browser, but if Explorer uh, doesn't show the item number, then you can choose the um, right mouse click, come down to column chooser, <clears throat> and then browse down to uh, the um, item number that would have appeared right in this area, and then drag it up. Into the uh, into the screen that you want, so that you can see those things that you're going to really need in order to uh, in order to make the um, uh, you know to copy what you want and be able to see 
and understand what you've got. Any questions that you'd like me to play around with to uh, you know to show? I've covered the topics. There's this is a fairly straightforward uh, subject in many cases. I think the um, the copy from and to um, is incredibly uh, inc incredibly powerful, uh, but it's often the these two here are often overlooked as far as being able to help you. Um, build um, an estimate or build an order uh, by using different combinations of uh, of the copy process from related, um, you know, from related sources. Let me stop and see if we've got any questions on uh, any anything that we've talked about. No questions, Paul. Okay, um, I don't want to keep you. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Thursday, we're going to get into, um, we're going to talk uh, in quite a bit of detail on um, on recurring orders, creating them, saving them, and then walk through the different processes of uh, how you can uh, uh, convert one of those, uh, not convert, but how you can create an order from a, a recurring order. You can either do that manually or refer to as on demand. And then we're going to go through and create a um, create a macro, um, and then learn how to schedule that macro so that if you're if a customer has a something that they want to reorder on a on a on a regular basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly, then you can create the recurring order, save it, create the um, the macro and the calendar, you know, so that that automatically happens. Um, um, on the scheduled basis that you that you wanted worked out with the customer, and then we'll finish up talking about uh, user defined fields and um, seeing what some of the simpler ones are and how to create them. If there's nothing else, um, I hope this is helpful again, as I said, and uh, I hope to see you back on on Thursday. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, yep. everyone. Take care. Yeah, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.